Welcome. In geometry, we know two important finite structures. The first is a finite abstract simplicity complex, a finite set of non-empty sets closed under the operation of taking finite non-empty subsets. And the other is a graph, finite simple graph. Uh, we have nodes and we have edges and we have no loops and no multiple connections. So there is a, this both form nice categories and there is a map which goes from the simplicity complexes to the graphs where you take just the sets as your vertices and you connect to if one is contained in the other and uh, on the other hand if you take a graph you can look at the Whitney complex the vertex sets of complete subgraphs which is a finite abstract simplicity complex so for me this is actually kind of there's there's no big difference between this. You can go from one to the other and uh, graphs are very powerful objects because they are intuitive. Like we have here examples of some some graphs. You can draw them, you can understand them. I understood them, I think, or kind of felt I understood them in high school while I had trouble to understand in high school what calculus does. So it's very, very intuitive. On the other hand, Simplicity complexes usually are introduced very late, like in an algebraic topology course, especially then uh, sometimes not even the abstract version, but just the concrete realizations. And but for me, complete realizations are you know not allowed. This is something which is going beyond finite mathematics. And actually, one of the upshots which we will see is if you look at will introduce a finite topology on these finite spaces, finite topologies in the classical sense, such that, and also a notion of homeomorphism, such that uh, you can distinguish spaces which are topologically different without going into geometric realizations, like looking at the polyhedra. <laughs> this is actually losing some, some of the topology and uh, most more recent work have shown this. So you can, for example, get two finite simplicial complexes, concrete simplicial complexes, finite, which you have geometric realizations, which are homeomorphic in the continuum, but they are different in the discrete. They are different in the finite case because they have different unit spheres. Important notions are unit spheres in both cases. So what we have is, for example, if you have a graph, the unit sphere of a of a vertex. These are all vertices which are connected to it. And if you have a simplicial complex, these are all the sim simplices which either are contained in the simplex or which contain the simplex. So there are geometric notions which are very intuitive. You use the notion of a star. So a star is actually quite an important object. If you have a simplicial complex and you take all the all the simplices which contain a given simplex. This is what we will take as the basis of our topology on a simplicial complex. And then there is also the core, which is the set of simplices which is contained, including it. And this is a simplicial complex by itself. And uh, so this is uh, the core. And we will take them as closed sets. And for a, for a graph where you can see things uh, more easily. So these are examples on the on this side. We have examples of graphs which I consider to be open. So we have a topology, a finite topology associated to the graph, which is uh, in this case these graphs are open and these graphs are closed. So how do we do that? So first of all what we do is just use the classical notions of Topology, a topology on a set, on an arbitrary set, is a set of sets which, such so that the empty set is there, the base itself is there, it's closed under finite intersections and it's closed under arbitrary unions. So uh, these are the four properties which have to be satisfied. If you have a finite set, then of course you have just arbitrary unions and arbitrary intersections are there, but not the complement. And the map is continuous if the inverse image of an open set is open, and uh, if there's a homeomorphism, if you can do both. F and F inverse are continuous. 
Also uh, useful is a, a base. A base is a smaller set of sets which generates the topology by arbitrary, taking arbitrary unions. So that's what we do in uh, the case of a simplicial complex. We introduce a topology on the simplicial complex where the base is, the base is given by the stars. <clears throat> For example, if you have a, a two-dimensional complex, then every triangle by itself is a open set. So there is no, it's not contained in anything else. Why is this here uh, an open set? Let's look at that. Uh, in this case, you can actually write it as a union of stars. On the other hand, this uh, is an example of a closed, of a closed uh, set. Actually, every graph by itself has the simplicity complex generated by that graph is a closed set. Actually, what means is to be closed. It means that you have a, co a simplicity complex. So the simplicity complexes, the sub-simplicity complexes are exactly, precisely the closed sets. So this is kind of, that's why it's kind of a Zariski type topology. So Zariski topology, you define what the closed sets are, like the algebraic subsets of a given algebraic variety, for example. So there is now a difficulty when you are dealing with finite topological spaces. One of the difficulties, for example, we would like to have this to be homeomorphic to that. That should be homeomorphic. And uh, uh, in order to do that, we cannot use just the, the classical notions, right? If you have a continuous map from one finite topological space to the other, and the continuous map from back, then they have to be kind of identical. They have to be, they have to have the same cardinality. So that's not very useful. That's too rigid. So you can ask yourself, is this really the right topology? Why not use another topology? Why not use, for example, the the geodesic topology, the topology given by the geodesic distance, which is a metric space. Every graph is a metric space. Just the distance between two points is the minimal number of edges which you need to pass to go from one to the other. That's a finite metric space, but the topology generated by this metric space is the discrete topology, where every vertex is both open and closed. And that's completely nonsense because you have a completely disconnected uh, topological space. Connected means that you cannot write the topological space as a union of two open sets which are not empty or the whole space. So the classical notion of connectivity, we want to have this classical notion of connectivity, we want to have this to be the same than the notion of connectivity which you have in a graph. We also want to have the dimension, topological dim dimension as defined by Hausdorff. You want to, like using covers, you want to have the same have the same topological dimension than the than the maximum dimension, and so on. So we want to have as many possible properties from the you know from what we kind of field topology should have. But there is one thing which we cannot save, which is the Hausdorff property. Right? If you have two points, you cannot separate them by open open sets, and this is. I mean, this is just in the nature, in the in in the, in the nature of things. For example, uh, we have two points, two vertices x and y, and they they are connected with each other. So the the only thing which you have every star, which contains x, has contains this edge. Every star which contains y, also contains uh, this. So you cannot separate these points. You cannot separate points which are attached to each other. But this is a a thing which actually kind of when I looked at this first in 2016 I kind of looked at the, the topology on a graph where the closed sets are the subgraphs of a graph which is a nice uh, kind of topological you know notion but it was not it's not Hausdorff and uh, additionally when you look at finite topological spaces there's just this difficulty that there is this rigidity that you have uh, homeomorphisms are just too strong you want to soften this up a little bit. And one of the things you can do is to look at graphs as equivalent or simplicial complexes as equivalent if they are obtained from each other by barycentric refinements. 
So barycentric, you find when this uh, obtain when you take, for example, starting the simplicia complex, you form the graph, and then you form again the simplicia complex from it. Or you start with the graph, you look at all the simplices, and then you take the simplices as, as vertices of a new graph and connect to if uh, one is contained in the other. This is the barycentric refinement. And for, from a topological point of view, this should be the same. This is what Poincaré already suggested. But there is a big, big uh, a problem if you go into the in topological realization and you look at it in a Euclidean space. Like here, these are topological realizations of the objects. Then you take the topology from the Euclidean space in use and you say two spaces are equivalent if they have homeomorphic uh, realizations, topological realizations. But there's a problem, right? You have this fact, you take a, a, a homology sphere, three uh, sphere, uh, like the Poincaré sphere or the Maser sphere, or something. then you take the double suspension of it and you get a five uh, dimensional sphere. So this five dimensional sphere is homeomorphic to the you know, the, the usual five dimensional sphere in six dimensions, but it's not uh, equivalent from the you know, combinatorial point of view because unit sphere is not a sphere. <coughs> unit sphere is not a sphere because the unit sphere of the unit sphere is this homology sphere. So we have the intersection of two unit two spheres in that space can be a homology sphere. Which usually you have uh, you distinguish this in the in the continuum by looking just at different categories of topological spaces. You look at PL manifolds, you look at uh, topological manifolds, and you look at uh, smooth smooth manifolds. And smooth manifolds are always PL manifolds. And PL manifolds are also to always topological manifolds, but they are different. And whether you can triangulate an object or not really depends very much. That's so one knows now not every topological uh, manifold can be triangulated from dimension four, five, six, seven. Yeah. So any any dimension. This is now known since a few years. So that's the notion of uh, uh, homeomorphic. So you can say say two spaces are homeomorphic if you can find a barycentric refinement of the first one, which and a continuous map from from this barycentric refinement to H, and also. Uh, you can take a barycentric refinement of the second one and then find a continuous map here. Continuous in the sense of topology. Continuous means that the inverse of each of an open set is open. The surprise is that they are not equivalent to the topology induced from the geometric realization. So this subject is a fantastic subject, for example, for a you know inquiry-based topology part where you you know don't cover subjects which are you know, found in literature. So, uh, so these are these notions I have not seen in in the literature. And nowadays, as uh, the open AI has shown, you know, kind of the machines are taking over. Once you have a, something published somewhere on the on the web, your uh, your uh, artificial intelligent friend can answer the question. Google can already answer a lot of questions. Wolfram Alpha can answer a lot of questions. OpenAI can answer a lot of questions, but there are still some things which are not uh, published anywhere. This is a, a topic, a perfect topic where you can you can uh, uh, experiment with this. For example, uh, one of the yeah, maybe concrete things: find an explicit homeomorphism. So find explicit homeomorphisms in the case when you have an octahedron and a, and a icosahedron. So just make a barycentric refinement of the icosahedron. And then you find a map from that topological space, concrete map from that topological space to the topological space, defined as here using this uh, notion of the octahedron, and then you do uh, you do the reverse reverse. And uh, it's also an interesting question. I've implemented this in the computer. Of course, you can do that. You can from any simplicial complex or any graph. This is easy to do. This is one line to go from here to here or here to here. And you can also, in a few lines, get uh, the topology of a simplicial complex or a graph. So the sets are growing very, very fast, of course. And you can, uh, you can also look at the yeah, Boolean algebra, which is generated by the union of open sets and closed sets. These are 
what one would call measurable sets. This is a sigma algebra. It's also closed under the uh, complement uh, notion. Then you have a, then you have also measure theory. There are lots of sets which are not measurable. They are neither closed, neither open, or can be not written as a union of open sets or closed sets. That's quite an interesting playground. Uh, in combinatorics, we would, for example, like to know how many, how big is the, say, the, the you know, the, how big are, the, for, for the cyclic graph with n elements, how many elements does the, does the topology have? So a computer can answer this. Maybe I can compute it afterwards if it's not big enough. Maybe, maybe too big already to, for a computer to, to get. But there are interesting uh, questions here. So that's it for today.